Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon from Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. Uh, my name is Adela Mehijanic. I will be your host for today. And uh, our guest today is a very special one. So we come from the same very executive academy. So we are part of the same alumni club, um, Maria Novakovic. Maria, welcome to the channel. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. <laughs> Maria, so tell us a little bit about yourself. So what, who, who is Maria? So what should we know? And uh, yeah, what would you like to share with us? Uh, my name is Maria Novakovic. Um, I'm 41 years old. I came to Austria in year 2000 to study electrical engineering. So I studied this on TAU Vienna. And I'm, um, I was, I'm living more or less like 20 years in Austria with certain breakout in, I was back in Serbia, in Belgrade. Um, I was a bit in Munich for a few years. So I'm really uh, well known like uh, Austrian already from year 2000. And as you just mentioned, we went to the same MBA. So we went to the same executive academy. This is also my branch. And today, today I'm working for Hilti. I'm a sales manager for a region, uh, Austrian region, part of Vienna, part of Niederösterreich, and I'm leading a troop of, of guys <laughs> uh, that are on the customer side. So tell us, how does your you know, business day look like? So what is that you exactly do? So can you bring us a little bit closer to your day? Daily life. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I was I was going through different, uh, completely different uh, industries. I was working for many years in Siemens. Um, I was in a leading strategic business. I was leading operational business. I was in IT industry, infrastructure industry, um, uh, energy business also, and now I'm in, in the construction industry. So um, my day, um, I'm, I'm not like really having an office. I'm uh, working partially for home and on the customer side. I have an office that I'm not visiting very often now, nowadays. And I'm uh, steering a, a, a group of uh, people that are on the customer side from all the day. My part of the day is part is uh, like uh, reviews business reviews, steering of the review uh, of the of the guys that are on the customer side, visit the customers uh, on the uh, the really uh, top level and developing jointly the strategies with my team, how we are going to uh, position certain parts of the, our portfolio. Also positioning some new innovative topics, uh, considering the software uh, part uh, that software products uh, and, uh, soft and the IT services that we are now pushing more into the construction. Mm -hmm industry because construction industry is quite conservative one this is an innovative part <laughs> to that so it's it's quite dynamic there is opposed a part of conceptual work there's a part of communicating and steering leading and then measuring the results mm. you mentioned being the the only woman in in the team and uh, woman in, in tech so how does it feel like but for me, it's normal. It, it's just normal. It shouldn't be like that. I hope in the future it's going to be different. Uh, but since I was studying electrical engineering and going previously to mathematical gymnasium in, in, in Belgrade, there was like always like 80, 90% of men around me. And I was leading always the team of men. There were also a few women there, but this is just for me, just normal. It feels like, okay, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> I remember when I came to to Austria. So, and, and I, um, in when I studied electrical engineering in Sarajevo, mm -hmm. uh, so for me it was more. Uh, it was like 50-50 men and women. Um, and when I came, so it wasn't like you, you know you see a, a woman professor and you have a female colleagues. It was natural. So it was normal environment. This is what I, what I knew. And when I came to Austria and when I said yeah, I studied at electrical engineering and I have a master's degree and in telecommunications, and they would they would look at me like I was like what I don't I don't see anything you know kind of special or different because where I come from it's it's a norm. It's very much normal that you have so, so many women uh, studying. And then later on, when I started working and when I, when I went to the uh, Technical University here in Vienna, I realized, OK, now, now I get what they're, what they're talking about, because there was no women or just uh, a few women who were mostly through the Erasmus uh, program coming here for a couple of months and then going back to their home countries. 
Yes, that's that's the I would uh, I would say this is a generally a problem and an issue uh, in all Dach region. So I had the same in Munich, and and this is something that it comes really uh, from the university. Already, not enough women are studying yes. electrical engineering, mathematics, any kind of um, life sciences, uh, comparing to the like I would say the Balkans or Russia or any kind of Eastern countries. It comes already from there and that's why there are not so many women then there in the working life uh, being in that kind of positions. Mm -hmm. Maria, how about you said you, you're 20 years ish uh, now here in, in, the, in Austria and in Germany as well. So you have uh, worked and led uh, teams uh, throughout uh, Dach region. So how was your back then? How was your start in, in Austria? Was it something challenging uh, back then? Was it something different? Do you see any changes, you know, in, the, in that period of time? I, I was, it was a quite, a, quite a big decision uh, for me actually to come here and to study because uh, you have to study in German language. And those days, nowadays, uh, master, you can study in English. Um, that you have to master some very difficult topics also in German language and German language is not the easiest language, uh, I would say, uh, and that was uh, the first, I would say, hurdle. Um, and then uh, to start in the working life uh, in that kind of circumstances where really not many women are seen in the technical field and extra as a, as a, um, um, as a woman there and from, from a foreigner. Uh, at the same time, what we can say that in Austria still there is not a mass of foreigners working for big tech companies. So the, this internationality is not so strong like you would think it would be. And, and then you are some kind of uh, unicorn there, but you're know, trying to fit, but you're not fitting. <laughs> uh, but you still want to make your thing. So it was... It was uh, Quite, quite like a challenge to to stay yourself and still to to make it up through the system because you cannot change complete system especially when I start working I was starting working for a big system of Siemens where you have ten thousand people mm -hmm. in that years so you want to you are different and but you still have somehow to find yourself out in uh, in the new system uh, that is already structured. Um, and not for unicorns, but structure for itself, and then still trying to change something in your smaller world and stay yourself. Mm. So I have seen that you've been very successful uh, throughout the years with that. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I was very determined to make my thing. Um, um, but of course there was some uh, clashes and it was ups and downs, but it's a part of the ride, I would say. So you have to, <laughs> you have to go with that. <laughs> Do, since, since we are talking now and I get a lot of those questions. So what would be your tips for young women uh, starting their career in the, in the tech being as well foreigners. So I just over the weekend, I got that uh, question. So what would be kind of your tips uh, for those colleagues or us? Uh, first, I would say um, you have to learn the language because also in the tech world, uh, even if it's sad that this um, general language is English, um, m most of the people around you are speaking German, so you have to speak fluently German. Um, then, uh, I mean, it comes also through the expertise. So if you're expert in something, if you're really good what you're doing, then that's going to come up. Yeah? And uh, so be good in that what you're doing because um, um, there is no free right. So there you're going to be looked from all the steps. So if you're good in that what you do, everybody are going to look up to you and going to follow. And third, um, don't give up. There's going to be hurdles um, because uh, you're different and you cannot change the complete system. And the system is going to try to put you in some kind of box. And don't, my, my tip is not get, don't let them put you in the box, but find a way how you can uh, like, uh, coexist with everything to make your successes and still don't lose yourself. Mm. That's that's important one, especially I like the, the, the box one. And what I like to say as well, yes, I'm different. So when I moved here, so I couldn't 
hide myself. I'm, I'm, I'm tall, I'm, I'm loud, uh, I have my opinion and uh, yeah, so use it as, find it a way to use it as your advantage because you are different and you're bringing something different and new to the table. And if the company is honest to their values and saying, yeah, we want to, you know, uh, value other people's opinion and invite others, you know, depending on the co company's culture as well. I was, I, I picked a company that had a really healthy uh, culture where everybody was more or less involved and asked for their opinion and you could contribute and start different initiatives on, on your own. It was much, much appreciated. Yeah, but it can be as well that, you know, companies cultures are very stiff and, and you have to, you know, you have to find your ways and and for me as well, it's, it's about um, taking care of your career because it's your career. You know, if you want to make something, it's firstly starts starts with you and then finding this kind of support system through your through your supervisors or mentors or, you know, looking for some other uh, ways outside of the company so that you can, you know, make a career because it's not going to be uh, easy or, but it's not, it's not impossible because we see like yourself and, and many other women uh, and myself that have made it uh, being, you know, coming from abroad and, and doing that all to the top. Yes, I think, I, I mean, um, um, it, it's perhaps it's not going to be so fast as somebody imagined, but uh, because also you have different, uh, I would say you're, you're starting from different point that other perhaps are starting. And, but this is the same whenever you change any kind of surroundings. I mean, it doesn't change country, change company and so on. So you're coming from the different bases. Um, and um, yeah, um, the thing is you just don't have to just um, don't give up, you just continue. And if and you are definitely in the driver's seat for your career, for all of your parts of life, not only for your career. And if you know what you want, and uh, uh, people are on the way are going to offer you the chances. And then certain doors are going to open, and then you have to be enough strong um, and want to reach for that challenge, uh, and then try it. Mm. Uh, so, so what I've seen throughout my career and anything what I wanted is if you know what you want, if you're not just doubting yourself and or you're searching yourself all the time, if you know what you want, then certain doors are going to open on the way. And then uh, just you have to have a courage to go through that open door. Mm. And that's what I really would say, uh, just if you know what you want you're going to find the door and when you the door is open just go there <laughs> and then it's, it'll be fine <laughs> and then work on and if it's wrong doesn't matter you're going to find that other there are other doors so it's not the at that end you mean there the thing is um it's a bigger definitely uh it's like that it's a bigger market so even if you're foreign, if you're a woman, if you're tech, if you're like unicorn and nobody saw like that, somebody like that, like that, the market is still open there in enough place for many people. So there are going to be different doors open. So one door is going to close, but otherwise it's going to open. So market is still uh, big enough and in Austria and especially even if you go for Germany, mm. for many interesting people who are willing to to put their knowledge on the table to try new things and to put their energy into the mm. market. Mm. Love that metaphor with with the doors. Um, yeah, it it caught me. It caught me. I was already uh, started thinking mm -hmm. about the one door, second door. Uh, we are coming. We we uh, briefly touched a topic, but and now we are coming to one of my favorite topics: uh, networking and mentoring. So how do you build your network, Maria, within the company, outside of the company? So where do you, you know, do you have any special tips, approach, um, tactics, strategy? I would say throughout my um, tips and strategies, um, my tips and strategies, like um, I, I was trying many network out mm -hmm. and um, then I had the two, two flows where I always had. So whatever I opening network, for my company in order to gain customers or for myself. Um, I'm getting into one network with the purpose of contacting certain persons in order to make a business. And the second one is 
I am really through from some very normal casual talking I'm uh, finding friends along the way mm -hmm. so I would say through my life uh, my network that gave me also friend gave me friendships and gave me businesses and and uh, really tips where to go and and open new doors for me are now my closest friends mm. so I would say I mean coming to Austria was one of the tip uh, when when a tip or tip or push uh, through my best friend from my ground school so we came together here and she's still here so it's a friendship for 30 years or more so this is what she we were like friends and she said I'm I'm speaking very good German I was living before in Berlin let's go for studies there I say okay let's go do it together so she was huge support then um, coming to to um, to to my first job at Siemens was through alumni network of my technical university uh, I went to one evening and I'm, I'm caught in a talk with some managers of Siemens and they told me why would yeah why why don't you apply for for us yeah then coming to this job that I was um that was different that was I was found online yeah so mm -hmm. somebody was looking what he was doing on LinkedIn and Xing or and then called me and they're like oh we would like to have a talk with you would you be interested in talking to us so or some different tips uh, I got perfect also some uh, some tips for some other businesses from my network from MBA where we have where and I have really deep friendships where we were traveling together uh, starting some new ventures and new businesses and projects on the side so it's a, it's a mix so it's a mix of 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 these two things I said I had some one-on-one -on, -one on one time business things that I found through different networks, through alumni networks of the university. Now I'm also part of the Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was also before this, I was part of management club in Austria. Um, it, when I was working in Serbia, I was in many, many different chambers of American Chamber of Commerce German. So you you mm -hmm. you got, you get a vast network of people. But I always always distinguish this too, like with the business. Uh, and that one that really developed a friendship and I would say that one developing friendships are most deepest also friendships but the best and valuable network also on business tips yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so that uh, they're always most fruitful ones yeah mm. I very often hear that uh, people say um, people say to me very often that um, they don't have time for networking so how how do you make time uh, to, you know, spend um, with your network to go to the events, to connect with people, to, I don't know, how, how do you do that? Do you put intentionally saying, okay, yeah, I really want, you know, this, this is my network, I want to take care of it, uh, or you have different approach? Um, um, I am, yeah, there is, there is no, there is a, the, depends um, depends on on the part of your life always whether you have some a lot of private obligations or not um, and the thing is um, wherever you go into the network really then decide uh, and see whom you're good connected with and then if you have a network I don't know for 100 people or 200 people when you find five people where you got really friends with yeah. Mm -hmm you're always connected so if you're also not seeing each other for two three or five months there are some whatsapp groups or whatever where you can stay in this like all superficial contact but also when you go away for two or five months and you're not contacting when you come back in, uh, to that network through these few friends really they connect you further to to the rest of the network so mm -hmm. you don't have to take care of the 100 people network. Uh, so just develop really, I would say, good connection and good network uh, with few people there where really friendships can exist and see them occasionally when you have time. Mm. And they will then give you insights of the rest of the network because they're connected to the rest of them. Mm. 
So that that's why otherwise, I mean, if I like in this alumni club and Rotary and so on, I mean, I would can do this the entire day <laughs> and I would never be finished. And, and perhaps I would be even exhausted at the end. So, um, so th this is what I am doing and it's, it's really good functioning um, and it brings you also energy back. So mm. it's not like in, investing. So it's, it's mutual because if you're connected in the end, the people when you're in the same uh, length, I would say, uh, and it's the same level of energy. And, and then, then it's, it's really, really just enjoyment. It's not network in sense of, I have a purpose now of yeah. getting business through that person. Yeah. No, it yeah. just, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The multiplicators, they call it. So what you said uh, yourself, you know, you have a couple of people and then this, this couple of people that you take care of, they take care of uh, other people and then it, mm -hmm. it, you, you grow uh, together. Um, another point was mentoring. So um, how do you see mentoring? Are you a mentor yourself? Have you had mentors um, uh, throughout your career within the company or outside the company? Um, in every company where I was, um, I was a part of mentoring program. I was a, either a mentee or afterwards a mentor. Um, I find it, um, I find it mentoring program is, um, I was in internal in companies always part and I was in certain external also, um, different, uh, also woman to woman and was something organized from American chamber of commerce. Um, where we, they were making match from from different industries, yeah, and so on. And it was always just a, um, um, it was always a question mark. It was like, what do you bring as a mentor to the table, mm -hmm. and uh, what the, how the mentee could profit from you, yeah. Um, and that was that. And I find it very good. And uh, with the bottom line, what I found out, because there was like five, 10 different also in, in, here in Austria, can um, imagine even this, the standard, uh, the newspaper had the mentoring yes. program, but it was a part of that. So um, the bottom line was like uh, really when just a normal talk and issues that you have, perhaps on the daily basis, we think whether I'm acting good or I need a tip why would I would do something mm -hmm. then give somebody else give you an insight from the similar situation so how they did and then leave you to do by yourself it's a huge mm -hmm. uh, I mean it's a huge thing it's uh, like normally you pay for consulting from that mm -hmm. yeah um, and then you have here a co type of coaching business coaching uh, mentoring and business tips like uh, that you're getting like uh, MNT and that's what also MNT told uh, for me like even in a private business okay um, I, I was having a MNT that she was she was in, in, in a private business leading own company and giving I was giving uh, hints from the corporate world mm -hmm. and and then it was like like matching okay whether like so somebody's going on the right way, for instance, yeah, mm. on their business view, on the on leading people and something on. And I give my experience and then they, the people, somebody is applying that for, for their case. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah, it's, a uh, you know, um, with all my mentors, I'm kind of friendship develops later on as well, because you, mm -hmm. you uh, through this phase and it was, you know, different phase, different skills, you know, uh, with, with different mentors. Um, and I, I really much um, enjoyed that time. And, and it helped me tremendously in, in my career, as you said, mm -hmm. because you have someone who you can talk about things that are that are currently on your on, on my plate, you know, so I currently have to think about it, be it like how to, you know, um, develop my career in, the, in this corporation or how, how, you know, what is going to be my next uh, step in, in career. So I want to, you know, move from this company to another, but I'm not sure which ways do I want to go and so on. So it, it, for me, it was very much so when I when I discovered it a couple of years back uh, through different organization and internally, it was a, a, as well a game changer. So where I had, you know, 
it's not like reading the book. You can always buy the book and then re you read it, but you now have some something, some you have a person that went uh, through that, that you can see, that you can have a, a contact with, so that, that you can really ask this, all these questions that come, come to you. And it's a very, very valuable uh, resource that exists nowadays in all the networks. And I, I can definitely recommend to everyone uh, to invest in themselves. I might say uh, I had also some some few mentors in the companies who was who were like in my very early days of the career who saw a huge potential in me and then they opened their network for yeah. me. Yes. Uh, and this was uh, with without them I I would be nowhere. So there is also like that I, I was I mean I, I I was very energized. Everybody could see me, but also I was very happy that somebody saw the potential in me and say, okay, I would now will not only give you a tips how to go, but I will open you my network for you. It means I will organize you some yeah. different steps for you to to uh, to go further. Mm -hmm. This is this is I will I was also give a tip for all like. Uh, high achievers or high flyers if they're not part of the mentoring program to choose a mentor in their organization and just ask for mentoring sometimes also when it's not uh, like um, like a process of the company mm. you can still go and I don't know if you if you have a nerd and I had it in uh, then and you should have like go to the managing board or or go to the someone in top management and, and, and write an email, ask for a meeting and say, um, I would appreciate if you would mentor me. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm sure that many, many of them will say yes. They will be even amazed that somebody go from bottom up and say, okay, I choose you as my mentor. If you would facilitate a few hours a year uh, yeah. to give me tips or something like that. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Some courage along 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 the way. I mean, you cannot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you cannot fail because you already don't have the mentors. <laughs> yes. So you can only try, and you can, and nothing's going to happen. Nobody say, "Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad that somebody do ask me to be a mentor." And I perhaps people don't have time. Eh? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. can happen, but but uh, but then you can try a better one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, Maria, thank you so much for sharing your insights. And before we wrap up uh, for mm -hmm. today, I wanted to ask you, what are you reading at the moment? Or is there any book that you would recommend to our viewers? Um, currently, uh, I'm not reading any books. Uh, what I started um, going through is um, um, it's uh, one site. I have a Coursera where I'm using a lot of uh, really, I'm going through different leadership courses through that are free of charge. I was amazed. Yeah, I started from the first lockdown, and then and now I'm going through um, something different on different platform. It's like live visioning mastery. It is uh, like uh, without no commercial, like going through through the mind valley, where you really going through the different levels of consciousness and trying to uh, set up your entire life uh, based partly on mindfulness, uh, uh, setting right goals um, and achieving the life, uh, not only like uh, what is it, empowering yourself, but also letting the life um, set some things also for you and make a mixture so, of that. So I'm trying through different courses to get inspired on more like uh, uh, metaphysical level and, and 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 incorporate it in my daily life and also in work mm. we didn't have that tip so far on our <laughs> channel so i'm definitely looking forward to checking that one and i will as well link it uh to our description of this video so that people you know maybe want to check that uh that as well i think we live in a, an amazing time where we have access to so many um wonderful of also free of charge free of charge resources it's really um sometimes the question when do i find the time for that uh but it's you know, compared to what our parents had and, and compared to, you know, when I was uh, be being back in, in school, when you had like a library and that was it, you, those were the books that you had in the library and that was the options. And nowadays you can just, whatever you can imagine, it's available. 
<laughs> yes, I mean it's. A, I mean you can decide where you can look uh, something on the on the Netflix, or you can screen something like that on your <laughs> phone. So it's <laughs> the time. In the end you have. <laughs> Um, but the things with content you're going to uh, change. I saw that is uh, beyond this really organizing, uh, making a focus on everything else. Um, this is a part when you want to go really up on, on higher level, you have to practitionize also different stuff like are doing also the best uh, people are doing sports. They're doing also visualizing, uh, they're doing also meditation, they're doing also focusing and these things. And this is something that you can practice whenever you're starting a job or you want to go on the high level on management or having your own company. Um, this is something that helps everybody. Mm, for sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely going to check that one and link it in, in mm -hmm. our description of this video. Thank you, Maria, so much for being our guest today, for, for sharing your insights and your career story. I'm sure you have inspired a couple of people along the way uh, to, you know, look for those, uh, uh, for that other doors. Uh, so mm -hmm. if... <laughs> super important and to be you know uh, yourself and and uh, courageous and and look for the for the ways um, you know how to achieve your goal thank you for having me it was my pleasure yeah and mm -hmm. thank you all for for watching this uh, video if you like the content then you know like share sub subscribe and of course if you know someone who would be a great guest for for our um channel so please let me know right in the comment section or uh, send me a linkedin message i will link uh, our both profiles in the description over there so yeah let's keep in touch and ne next episodes are coming along the way thank you everyone and enjoy your afternoon bye, bye. <laughs>